Okay, so last time we took apart this Spider 2003 Spider Extra. Here's the, uh, the frame. So this time I'm going to show the operational principle. So basically all that means is just, you know, what, what happens when you pressurize this thing? What happens when you pull the trigger? Kind of the major components, where the air goes, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not really going to go into the high pressure stuff. Uh, really, really show you what the forces involved are. I may do a video on that later, um, depending on if there's interest in that. Um, just for general reference, I think these new tanks run up to about 4,500 PSI. I think they can hold up to 5,000 or so, but I think most places only charge them to 4,500. Um, but then what I've read is that they're regulated here at the outlet to around 800 PSI. Uh, and then some of the newer, like electronic guns that have, you know, more efficient things, um, different type of valving and whatnot. I think their operating pressures are anywhere from, I think I've seen 125 up to 200 PSI or so. Um, all that air pressure does is move around different things, um, using valves and a couple of other solenoid. Well, solenoid is a valve, but it uses those to move the air around, to recock the gun, to propel the paintball. It does a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, but today we're going to talk about this Spider. Now this is an old school style gun. It's got a blowback bolt system. We'll see that here in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do now, show you a few things. So in the barrel, I uh, hope you guys can see this, but inside the barrel where this gold set screw normally sits for the uh, two-way valve, or I guess not two-way valve. It's a, just a valve that sits in there. Um, a flashlight here. Let's see if we can catch that. So see how it illuminates in there? There is an air passageway in there that allows the air to go from that valve up into the bolt. Um, that is going to be represented right here. This area is where we travel from the valve up into the bolt. Uh, let's see, where else do we go here? So this front portion on the whole carrier setup here, this front portion is where the low pressure air comes in. Uh, low pressure being whatever gets charged into here. Like I said, I think that's run at 800 PSI. Could be more or less. I'll have to dig into some more specs. And as I learn, we'll get into that some more. But you'll see that that sits about right here. So this is the front. We have the piece that the air comes through from the regulators and everything here. Uh, it has double seals to make sure that nothing escapes. Uh, it has a very small through hole. You can kind of see it in there. A lot of that high pressure air is gonna be restricted here in the first place. So as it goes from this really high pressure air here, as it gets released, it's gonna be flow restricted here, which causes a lot of drop in pressure. Um, like I said, I'll explain that in some videos later. Uh, but, let's see, the other thing we have is the trigger frame, which you can see kind of the outline of where it goes here. But this has this cool little mechanism here called the sear, I believe. Uh, if you can see down in there, let me position this just so. Oh, not quite. I need some light on it. So down in there, you can see when I pull the trigger, it moves that bar up and down. But right now, that bar will not do anything because this second piece here that pokes up, which I've captured here on my art drawing, it sticks up and catches the striker when it goes back. And what happens is Sorry about that. Uh, so what happens is the pressure from the striker will push on this, and then that allows that piece inside that we saw earlier that was moving, if you watch closely, it'll make the sear drop, which then allows the striker to move forward. So what we're gonna do for now So what I'm gonna do now is show you kind of where all this goes. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our pink highlighter here and I'm gonna show you high pressure air. Um, we'll go ahead and put the poppet valve in since that's what holds that air pressure. Put this guy in here. You can see the hole that goes through the middle there. If I take the poppet stem out, 
That hole is what allows the air to go up into the bolt. But this side allows air to come back to reset the striker. And we'll show you that again here in a minute. But for now, we're gonna set that in place. So we're gonna start here at the tank. We got high pressure air. It's gonna run through all of our lines, up through this regulator, all the way into this front portion. It's got extra volume in here. Extra volume is important because once it's released, a lot of that volume will dissipate and has to be refilled. Um, we also then come into this chamber here where the poppet valve sits and then it's just going to hang out there. So high pressure air, your, you know, weapon is charged, we'll say. Uh, if you don't actually pull back the bolt at the beginning of this setup, what's going to happen is that striker is going to be sitting here and it's going to allow this seal to be open and that's going to allow air to leak out of here. So be sure to pull back your um, cocking lever, hammer, whatever you call it. Uh, just make sure that this is pulled back. So that's that first initial thing that most people do when you're getting ready to charge up. You pull it back, it seals off this pop of valve due to this spring pressure here, and then you're allowed to charge it. Now, we are cocked in place here. Imagine paintball, gravity fed, is gonna fall down in front of this bolt. So it's sitting here for the time being. Uh, what happens, you pull the trigger, the sear drops. My pencil's flipping. Uh, this sear is gonna rotate down, it's gonna drop. That's going to allow the striker here, which is pressured by a spring sitting in the back that is tied in place. That's gonna move forward really quickly. Now, this thing is heavy, so it's gonna be a lot of mass moving forward, hence the necessity for these giant springs. And what I assume is gonna work out later in the math is some really high pressure air. But what happens, this pushes forward. You can see we engage that poppet valve, it opens. That now allows the air to travel between the valve up into the bolt. And then that air pressure pushes the paintball, shoves the paintball down your barrel. A lot of that pressure is dissipated. So remember I mentioned volume earlier. A lot of that volume goes through here and is dissipated within like the first eight inches or so of this barrel. And then you can see the ports on the barrel. A lot of people think this changes rifling. It can affect all kinds of things. Uh, from the bit of research and reading that I've done, this porting actually allows the paintball to slip out the end of the barrel um, because once that pressure is dissipated in here if you get a low enough pressure it'll start creating more drag on the paintball and what these ports do is allow that empty cavity behind the traveling paintball to refill with air that way you don't get drag you don't lose your muzzle velocity for your paintball you want to keep that i think 280 uh, feet per second is the standard running rate that we've seen in a lot of the fields um, and I think that's what you want to keep it underneath. Make sure people don't get hurt, but still have enough velocity to travel a good distance and to, you know, explode on impact. Well, I guess not explode, just rupture the paintball and cover your friends in paint. Uh, but either way, simultaneously, while that air is traveling up and out the end of the bolt, what happens is that same air pressure fills up this cavity. And since it's expanding, there's a lot of pressure here. This wants to travel backwards. So this recloses as everything else is expanding. The air pushes back, reclicks into the sear here. You're ready to go for your next shot. As you know, this closes, this whole chamber repressurizes, sets you up for your next thing. Uh, what we can do now, is, uh, let's see, we can check out the end of the bolt. I don't know how well you can see that, but we're gonna put some light on it. So I'm going to shine light in the air hole here, and you can see that illuminates the inside. That spoke in there is hollow. It allows all that air pressure to come forward. Uh, a lot of times you'll see those spokes in there. Sometimes you'll call, you see these called venturi valves. It's all just made to straighten out the air that's going through that bolt. That way you don't get any kind of weird disturbances on the back of the paintball, make it fly weird, or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, Let's see, just to recapture what I mentioned earlier though, here, this poppet valve opens. All this air pressure 
fills this chamber. It cannot come out this way because of that set screw. So it's forced to go up through the bolt and out. And come into here, expand and reset your striker. All right, I think that's all we had today. Yeah, we'll go ahead and close the video there. Uh, let me know if you wanna see what this does here. So just in general reference, when you've got um, air pressure, it acts along this face and how much force goes among this face or along this face, uh, that's all determined by the pressure built up here. Now there's a lot more that goes into it, but that's just a basic. So it's gonna be the same thing on the back of the paintball. You've got so much on that back, on the back of the paintball, that's gonna force it out of the barrel here. Um, following videos, I'll probably do some ballistics, give you like general best case scenario of what your paintball can do as far as travel. I'm sure you all already know that from firing these things, but math's always fun to kind of get into, especially from a engineering perspective there. Anyways, uh, let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Uh, you know, I'm willing to try to explain just about anything. All right, see you next time.